Okay. Recording is on. Welcome back, everyone, to our last session for today. And um, let me just see. There was a question in here. Uh, what is the difference between calling and what is the difference between a calling, vision, and purpose? Then there's another question, is there any difference between a mentor and a spiritual father? Okay, so um, let's just quickly answer these questions. Uh, between a calling, vision, and purpose. Now, generally, these are related, but they're just different aspects of, you know, what God wants us to do, right? So when we say calling it means that god has a plan for you and he a calling is you can think of it as is as an invitation right god says i'm inviting you would you like to come and serve me or would you like to come and do this for my kingdom a calling is an invitation uh it is not Something God will force you to do. He won't catch you by the head and pull you and put you there. He won't do that. He invites us. Right? That's why we are co-workers with God. That means we say yes to God and we work with Him. You know, He won't force us into it. He invites us. So that's that invitation is a calling. And we say yes to that call. So when you receive that invitation from God, you say yes to it. You're saying yes to the calling. But in that invitation, in that calling, God gives you a vision. What is a vision? A vision is a picture of a future that God wants to see fulfilled. It's a vision. It's, a, it's something that God says, okay, this is what I want you to do. It's a vision that, for your life. So God gives you an invitation. He also gives you a vision, uh, a picture of what the future would be like when you do it. And then, in order to fulfill that vision, you should have some objectives. I'm going to do this. Those objectives or those assignments are what we call as purpose. I'm living for this purpose. right? And it's, of course, all aligned. It's aligned to God's calling, to the vision. You have a purpose. right? This is why I'm living here. So they are all connected. They're all part of the same thing, but they're just different aspects of the same thing. It's what this is what God wants to uh, work through you, work through your life. Okay, I hope that's clear. Mark is read. Next, uh, is there any difference between a mentor and a spiritual father? The difference is the kind of relationship we share. A spiritual father can be a men will be a, a spiritual father, mother, can you use uh, any gender, is a mentor, but not every mentor is a spiritual father or mother. A mentor is somebody who just guides you, who shares from their learning, from their experience, they give some input in your life for a particular thing. That's a mentor, a coach. But a spiritual father has a, a relationship where they're journeying with you uh, typically over an extended period of time. Uh, they're journeying with you. They're pouring into your life. So they, they, they serve as a, a mentor. But what does a spiritual father do? Really, he takes you from a place of immaturity and he brings you to a place of maturity. That's a father or a mother. A mentor helps develop a certain skill, certain uh, you know, certain capability, certain learning in a certain area. That's a mentor. So that's the big difference, right? A mentor gives input in your life for a particular thing to enhance your skill, your learning, your experience. A spiritual father or mother takes you from a place of immaturity to a place of maturity. That's a different kind of a journey. So th that's the main difference between a mentor and somebody who is a spiritual father or mother. I hope that helps. Yeah. 
Right? Any other questions from people in class? People online? Everyone's happy? Okay. So let's go to our last session. And we'll be done. So we're talking about following Jesus today and, I, and, and, and this orientation week. Um, as you get ready to journey through this semester, through this year, this is our goal. Our goal is to follow Jesus. So in following Jesus, we said we must follow his lifestyle, meaning how he lived, he must live. Live like him. Walk as he walked. Live as he lived. So we follow Jesus in lifestyle, and we also follow Jesus in ministry. That means in, in the service that we do, in the work we do, we follow Jesus. And if you examine the ministry of Jesus, of course, there will be a lot of things that you and I can say about uh, the ministry of Jesus. I just make these four points uh, just to emphasize certain things that Ministry for Jesus, number one, it came from his place of intimacy with God. It came from that. So ministry was not, oh, I have to do some work. Uh, otherwise, I won't, my father won't give me food to eat. It's not like that. <laughs> ministry was not a job that he was doing. Right? It was from the place of intimacy. He was doing ministry. Okay. Uh, I think a great verse on this. And this. There's a lot. I think if you study the Gospel of John, uh, you can see this come out so powerfully. But I'll just reference us to one verse in John chapter 5 and verse 19. It comes out so powerfully. In John 5 verse 19, Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. For whatever he, that is the father, does, the son also does in like manner. Verse 20, for the father loves the son and shows him all things uh, that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that he, that you may marvel. Notice what he says in verse 19. He says, to put it in simple terms, he says, look, I'm not doing this ministry by my own self. I'm not doing this work, this ministry. My ministry is not just my own. I'm not doing it of my own self. The son can do nothing of himself. But I am doing whatever I'm seeing the father do. The father is showing me I'm following. That means it's coming out of that place of relationship with the father. And that's what I'm doing. I want to encourage all of us. That's what ministry must be. It must not be something we do of ourselves. See, we can do a lot by ourselves. We can. Look at the world around us. People have done so many things, big things. They've gone to the moon and come. I understand that, you know, it's God who's given us the brains and the intelligence and all that. But there are so many people who they do things on their own. Godless people, they build big businesses and do this and that and all kinds of things. So we can do a lot of things, but those things don't matter for God. What we have to do is to do the will of the Father. Jesus said in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. Actually, you can do a lot of things, but all that you do without him amounts to nothing. It won't last till eternity. But if you and I want to do things that will last for eternity, then it has to come from Him. Right? Without me, you can do nothing. Jesus said, I do nothing of myself. But what I see the Father, what the Father is telling me, that's what I'm doing. So, the essence of it is this. Ministry must come out of our relationship with God. And let it happen. Let it be a flow. From your relationship with God, let it come. Now, we must work hard. I'm not saying we must not work hard. 
you know, the Apostle Paul said, you know, I've worked more than, I've worked more than all the other apostles. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 10. He said, I've worked more than the other apostles. Yes, we have to work hard. We'll talk about all of that in the future. But everything is coming from God. He is guiding us. He's directing us. He's giving us the strength. And we are completely dependent on Him. That's the kind of ministry we want to have. The psalmist said, Psalm 127, verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Who built it? Of course you can build a house by yourself, but that amounts to nothing. That will not last for eternity. Only what God builds through us, it will last for eternity. It will have fruit for eternity. Unless the Lord builds the house, our work is useless. Right? So we have to God, from that place of intimacy, let everything come. Not by my own strength, my own ability, my own drive. My strength, my ability, my energy, I'm submitting it to you. And I want to use it to do your will, what you want me to do. Yes, I will use my energy. Yes, I will use my strength. But it is to do what he tells me to do out of that place of intimacy. So position yourself like that. That way, there will be no need for competition. There's only, okay, that person is doing so much, so fine, that's up to him. I must do what God wants me to do. We're not competing with each other. God is not asking me, did you do better than that person? He's asking you, did you do what I told you to do? That's it. Right? So we, there's no competition here. We are not competing with other churches, other ministries, other people. No, 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 no. Only thing is, it will come, whatever I do, it must come from God. It must be born of God. It must be birthed of God. Right? And that's how Jesus did his ministry. He says, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. Whatever he shows me, I'm doing. Okay, so ministry, keep it like that. Otherwise, sometimes ministry can be driven out of jealousy. You learned that earlier this week. Ah, he started Bible college. I will also start Bible college. He went to America. I also will go to America. Why are you doing this? It is ministry, but it is birthed out of competition, jealousy. That is not valid. It won't last. So don't do anything out of being motivated. Don't do anything in ministry, being motivated by com competition, jealousy, uh, all that. No, no. The only reason you do it is because God has told you, go do it. Jesus said, I don't do anything of myself, only what I see the Father do. Whatever he shows me, that's what I do. Second thing about ministry is Jesus spent a lot of time teaching and preaching. Yeah, you can see four Gospels over and over again. Every day, morning, night, afternoon, he was teaching and preaching. He spent a lot of time in teaching and preaching the Father, the, word, the words of God. So part of our what we do in ministry must involve the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. It may seem, you know, hey, why are you spending so much time teaching and preaching? Well, that's part of the ministry. Because God works through His Word. And if we can put the Word of God into the lives of people, it will change them. It will empower them. It will strengthen them. So we put a lot of effort into the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. Jesus did that. He spent a lot of time. He went from city to city, teaching and preaching in the cities, in the towns, in the villages. He was teaching, preaching the word. To teach and preach the word of God. Get the word of God out to people. That must be our focus. Right? So the, the, the focus is not to promote myself or promote our ministry or promote our name. No, no, no. Just teach and preach the word of God. Be happy. However the word of God goes out, be happy. 
because that word the word of god will change people's lives get the word of god out jesus spent a lot of time doing that then number 3 jesus spent a lot of time doing the father's works when i say the father's works i mean the healing the miracles the deliverance the supernatural so that's number 3 maybe i'll just change that and i'll just say doing uh, the supernatural doing the works the mir miraculous works of god jesus emphasized that a lot and we need to do that um the challenge in the church is that we kind of gone away from believing in the super i'm not saying everywhere but in some parts of the church uh, we've gone away from believing god for the supernatural and in healing and deliverance and the miraculous and we but we need to maintain that because jesus maintained that for for jesus that was very important now i'll just reference a few verses here if you go with me to john chapter 10 john 10 and um, we will look at verse we look at a few verses John 10, we look at verse 24, 25, and also verse 37. John 10, 24. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name they bear witness of me. John 10, 25. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. And then verse 37. If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. Verse 38. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So in verse 24, the Jews came and they said, hey, tell us, are you the Messiah or not? Just tell us plainly, yes or no. Are you the Messiah or not? He says, I already told you, but you're not believing me. And then he says, you see the miracles I'm doing? They are proof that I am the one whom the Father has sent. I am the Messiah. The miracles, they are proof. And then he says in verse 37, if I do not do these words, if I don't do these miracles, don't believe in me. Think about that. I mean, it's how important were miracles to Jesus. He said, if I don't do the miracles, don't believe. But if I do the miracles, even if you don't believe what I'm saying, you believe me because of the miracles. Right? So the miraculous, the signs, the wonders, the healings, the miracles, the deliverance, that was very important in the ministry of Jesus. To the point where he said, if I don't do miracles, don't believe. But if I'm doing miracles, even if you don't believe what I say, you believe me because of the miracles you're saying. So miraculous. The supernatural is important. And um, Jesus made it very clear that as believers, we will do his work. So we want to press in and we want to do the miraculous like Jesus did and say, God, I want you to heal me, to heal, uh, use me, to heal the sick, to uh, cast out demons, to do the supernatural, to do the miraculous. I want to pray for people and see, have them experience the work of God in their lives. Right? So that's number three, doing the Father's works. And also, in the ministry, Jesus raised other disciples. He discipled other people. That's very important because he didn't come and say, okay, I'll do everything. I'll finish my work and I'll go. No, he came and then he raised disciples. And he told them, go make more disciples. Teach them to observe whatever I've, whatever I've taught you, you teach them. So, 
he raised up other people. And this is what ministry is all about. It's about raising up other people. Right? Pouring into their lives and saying, you too can be a disciple. You too can serve God. You too can do uh, what I'm doing. Right? So, you know, when Jesus raised up his disciples in John 14, verse 12, he said, those who believe in me, the works I do, you will do, and greater works, because I'm going to the Father. Now think about that. Which pastor will tell his congregation, congregation, I'm serving you, so that one day you will do better than me. You will have, you know, you will become better than me. That's what Jesus is telling his disciples. You will do greater works than me because when I go to the Father, I'll send the Holy Spirit and he'll help you do bigger things than me, greater things than me. That's the heart of Jesus. Can you imagine? He's telling you and me, you are going to do greater than greater works than me because I'll send the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's his heart. And he, he wants disciples to, to see even bigger things. And that should be our heart when we raise up people. That people in our congregation, in our churches, will do better than us. They'll be stronger than us. They'll be more anointed than us. They'll, they will go bigger places than us. Not that, oh, I must, you must always be below me. No. It will be great if you supersede me. You do better than me. That's the heart of Jesus. When he raised up people, that's how he raised up people. And I want to challenge you in your ministry. When you serve people, when, if you're going to be a pastor, if you're going to be, that when you serve people, the goal is to make them even better than you. To help them have bigger, whatever, you know, greater than you. That's how Jesus said, you will do greater works than me. Because the Holy Spirit is going to come to you. All right? So in ministry, keep these four things in mind. First, for us, ministry must come from a place of intimacy. Two, we must preach and teach the word of God. That's important. Don't neglect that. Number three, we must do the supernatural. Pursue the supernatural. Signs, wonders, miracles, healings. Number four, raise up people. Raise up disciples so that they can be better than you. They can, they can do more than you. That's the kind of disciples we must raise. Jesus wanted that. And that's what we must pursue in ministry. Amen? All right. Any questions? And now I want, to, I want us to just pray together for a few minutes. But let me pause here and see. Uh, any questions from students online? Okay. So... We are going to pray. I just want to pray together with all of us. Why don't we stand up to our feet? And those of you who are online, thank you for joining. We will pray together. And next week, classes will start from 9 o'clock. All right, so we'll have the, the regular semester happening. We will follow the timetable. So please connect to your those of you online. Uh, please remember to connect to your respective Google Classrooms uh, using the class codes. Okay, so this whole week we were on the main Audi, uh, but from Monday you follow the class timetable and you connect to your respective classes using the Google class codes. Um, and uh, yeah, so the regular classes will start from Monday. So now I wanted to just to pray, I want us to pray together. And I want to, you to pray in your heart, saying, Lord, I want to follow Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to grow up in all things to become like Jesus. Help me to keep my eyes on Jesus. Yeah. I want to live like him. I want to have a lifestyle like Jesus. I want to have a ministry like Jesus. That's it. Right? And train me. Train me. Right? Jesus said, if we are properly trained, we are fully trained, we will become like him. And we are all going through that training of God in our lives. So I want you to pray and say, God, please train me so I can become more and more like Jesus in my lifestyle 
and in my ministry. And I'm just going to pray with all of us together. I'm praying with all of you, those of you are online, and those of you who may be watching this uh, sometime later on the e-learning portal. We're praying together, and let's just, just stand before God and say, God, this is my prayer. Father, we just want to thank you, God, that uh, you would call each one of us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. To become like Jesus. That is your calling on each of our lives. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for every person standing here in the classroom, for every person joined in the online classroom, for every person who will watch this in the e-learning portal, God. Father, that by the power of your Holy Spirit and by the power of your word and by the influence of godly people around us, you will train us, God. That, God, you will take out of our lives things that are wrong. And, God, that you will sharpen and smooth out all the rough edges, God, and sharpen our skills and sharpen our lives and make us better and better so that we can become more and more like Jesus. We invite your work in our lives. We invite you to do a powerful work, a deep work, Lord, by the power of your spirit, by the power of your word. And I take authority over Satan. I take authority over every evil work that may have touched our lives, our bodies, our minds, our spirits in any way. And today, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of Almighty God, Satan, I declare your hold over our lives is broken wherever we are. You have no place in us, no claim in us, no hold over our lives. We are the sons and the daughters of Almighty God. We are the servants of the Most High God. We are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our spirit, soul, and body belong to Almighty God. And they are consecrated. They are holy ground. They are heaven's territory. They are God's property. And we are here to be ambassadors for Christ. We are here to walk under the anointing of God that destroys Satan's yokes and removes the burdens. We are here to push back the works of darkness. We are here to advance the kingdom of God. And Holy Spirit, thank you that you empower each of us. That you work in us and you work through us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your work. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your revelation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for anointing our eyes, opening our eyes, opening our ears, for speaking into our hearts. Oh, God, thank you. We honor you. We praise you. And God, may your touch be on every person in this classroom, on the online classroom in the e-learning portal. Holy Spirit, may your hand be great and strong and heavy on each of us, changing us, touching us. Thank you, God. We bless you. We honor you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you, everyone. So we were going to end our session here. Uh, you'll have a break, and then uh, we'll come back for the worship time, Supernatural Hour, at 12 o'clock. Right? Those of you online, we end here. Uh, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock. Uh, sorry, not Sunday morning. Monday morning, I'm sorry. Monday morning, 9 o'clock, Indian time. Classes will start. Uh, please join. Uh, all, the, all the lectures will start next week. God bless you. Thank you for being part of uh, the online class. Amen.